Coming up on KCCI 8 News Close Up, a major deadline at the State House over the dozens of bills that died last week and the others that did survive. Firefighters fighting cancer. Why the bill to expand medical coverage for firefighters suddenly stopped in the Iowa Senate. And TikTok troubles, the plan in Congress threatening access to the popular app and how the response is going here in Iowa. This is Iowa's news leader. This is KCCI 8 News Close Up. Good morning and welcome to Close Up. I'm KCCI Chief Political Reporter Amanda Rooker. The second final deadline at the Iowa State House is officially over and dozens of bills did not survive. Bills had to pass through one full chamber in either the House or Senate and then through subcommittee and committee in the other chamber in order to advance past last Friday's deadline. The goal is to help narrow down the bills that lawmakers have to work on. The Iowa Senate chose not to advance several major education bills. That includes a plan to change what Iowa students learn in history class, a bill to require parent permission for kids to use social media, another that would have frozen tuition at Iowa's public universities and overhauled DEI programs, and a bill that would create new requirements to address chronic absences at Iowa schools. I talked with Republican leaders in both chambers about why the Senate did not advance so many House education plans. The leaders on our education committee have been here a long time. They've made a lot of changes. They've seen success with those changes and don't think we need as many bills to um, keep our state going in the right direction. But, um, you know, I, I think that's as simple as it is. The House, they have, they have newer members, and so they're coming down with, with newer issues. But, um, and I, I respect that and I get that, that, you know, they first year elected and want to start working on some issue. But overall, big picture in Iowa, we're in a great spot. We're in a really good spot as a state and, and we just don't believe there's that much we need to do to keep us in a great spot. Obviously there's a lot of bills moving through the system right now. We feel uh, here in the House we've, uh, as we talked about early in session, we laid out several policy bills that we wanted to see get moved through the House. And I think we passed almost every one of our priorities off the floor or we plan to um, in the upcoming week. But I would say that we're going to continue to look for opportunities to include those in conversations as we move forward. We're kind of getting to that point in session where we're going to talk about budgets, we're going to talk about tax policy, but we also feel that there's been some issues that we've brought forward at the beginning of session that we passed over early enough that didn't see the light of day that we feel that they need to be continued as part of the ongoing conversations between the House and the Senate. A few education bills did survive, including one that would require middle and high school students to watch a video showing the full development of human life in the womb. And a bill that would allow schools to arm teachers and other staff if they take several mandatory trainings also survived. I talked with the House and Senate Republicans about the future of that school security proposal. Right now, anyone with just a permit to carry could carry if the school authorizes it. Now, there's been some insurance implications that has caused that not to actually take place. Our bill does not mandate that they have to do it. Our bill says if they want to, we're trying to provide all the levels of protections and certainty for the school districts to know what each school district is doing when it comes to that. There is a need in Iowa to consider increased or lowering our response times. That's not being critical of what happened in Perry. What happened in Perry, and everyone I've talked to involved with that, said that was phenomenal response times. People were on the ground seven minutes. But what we're learning through that situation and the way um, that it played itself out, even seven minutes was not fast enough. So if schools want to have that extra level of protection at the local level, and that's a complete decision they're allowed to make, we just want to make sure that whatever they do, there's a standard set across the state. School safety is a priority, yes. And there are ways to do that already, and there's ways that schools can already arm teachers if they want to. Um, uh, whether we need to make changes to that, we'll take a look at that in the next few weeks. But um, I know there's already put things in law to allow for those same safety measures to happen. And so um, whether we need to make changes or not, that's what our committee will decide over the next you know, few weeks. And several major health care bills also did not make it past the funnel deadline. That includes a bill that would have made birth control available at pharmacies without a prescription and a plan to increase penalties for killing a quote unborn person. Some say that bill would have threatened access to in vitro fertilization treatments in Iowa. A bill to expand paid paternity leave for state employees also died this week. So did a bill to expand medical coverage for firefighters to include more cancers. And even though that bill passed unanimously in the House, the Senate did not advance it. I asked Senate Republicans why, as they face criticism from state Democrats. 
The one bill I'm really disappointed in is that the firefighters bill to address cancer did not go through the Senate. And, and the firefighters truly deserved to have that bill. Uh, I think all of us, had, the Senate did not do this bill. It's done. We are not moving that bill forward in the Senate. I do not know why. But it, it got killed earlier in the week. And uh, I know that every legislator received phone calls, emails from hundreds of firefighters and their families from all over the state and gave us their stories on how important that bill was to them because they now have proof that so much of the, of the chemicals that they've been exposed to in their job has really led to all these additional cancers and yet we're not going to address it at all. So very disappointed about that. There's a lot of pension bills that come through here every year and so there's, one, there's some on 411, there's one for the firefighters and there, there's just a lot that come through. Um, I, I don't know um, why specifically he didn't put that bill through. Um, but it's something I trust Senator Schultz a lot. I mean, he, he knows these issues, he researches them, and um, we have to trust, trust our committee process. In KCCI did ask State Senator Jason Schultz why he tabled the firefighter bill. He responded in a statement writing, quote, there were still some questions about the bill and whether it was the best way to support all of Iowa's firefighters and some of the effects it may have. We do want to continue the conversation, work through some of those questions in the future, and talk about the best ways we can support those trying to protect us and our communities. Now, there were still several other bills that did not survive the funnel deadline, including a plan to let private CPA firms audit state agencies, and Governor Kim Reynolds' bill that would have required Iowans to only use state facilities that match their sex at birth. Two immigration bills also died. One would have banned Iowa businesses from knowingly employing undocumented immigrants, and some would have been required to use the federal E-Verify program. A House proposal on immigration also died that would have made smuggling undocumented immigrants with the intent to hide them from law enforcement or make a profit a Class C felony. But state lawmakers are also able to preserve bills that did not advance through the funnel deadline by placing them on the unfinished business calendar. Any bill on that list can still be considered this year. A plan to change Iowa's election laws was one of, the more, was one of more than 100 bills placed on that list. That would ban ballot drop boxes and would require voters to get their absentee ballots in earlier. Lawmakers can also continue working on a bill that would limit the amount of THC allowed in Iowa products along with a bill that would ban automated traffic cameras and make it illegal to touch or hold an electronic device while driving. State Republicans still have significant work left on their push to change Iowa's Area Education Agencies, or AEAs. The Senate and House have different plans, and both were placed on the unfinished business list. So still to come on close up, can state lawmakers reach a deal on AEA reform this year, where both plans stand with four weeks until session is scheduled to end? And AEA change bogging down the budget process. Why lawmakers say they missed a key school funding deadline and the impact that could have on classrooms across the state.
State Republican lawmakers are still working to make major changes to Iowa's Area Education Agencies, or AEAs. But time is running out. There is only four weeks until session is scheduled to end, and the House and Senate have not reached an agreement yet. Right now, AEAs oversee services to all students with disabilities. Under the House plan, AEAs would continue to receive all state and federal special education funding, but school districts could choose to contract with someone else for general education and media services. AEAs provide those things right now, things like mental health support, curriculum assistance, and technology delivery. But the Senate's bill would give school districts the majority of both special education and general education funding. That would allow school districts to decide whether to continue working with their local AEA for all or some services or to contract with an alternative provider. We talked with the Senate and House Republicans about where negotiations stand and whether they'll be able to reach a compromise this year. We feel pretty strongly that whatever we do with, with the AAs, we've been very clear in the House. We wanted to continue to provide a certainty for special ed parents and students and school districts. So what we're looking at right now is going to continue to have that be part of that conversation. I think one thing that's positive from the standpoint of it looks like there's a willingness to want to increase beginning teacher pay. It looks like there's a willingness to want to have some level of reform when it comes to AAs. Obviously, SSA, there's a difference in the number, but we, we've always found a way to work through that. But the good news is there's a, there's a, it looks like there's a willingness to want to do those things. It's just obviously what are the details and the final products going to look like. But right now we're having some productive conversations. We've had very open conversations with the House and with our own caucus members. I think we're close in our caucus. Um, there may be a couple of changes next week, but I think we're pretty close. Um, our bill is vastly different than the governor's original bill. It's vastly different than the House, and so that's what makes it a little bit harder. we got to get our own bill off the floor um, hopefully soon to really start that conversation to see where it ends. But um, we've had good conversations with both the House and the governor, so I'm optimistic. Everybody has a little bit different, and so it's really just trying to bring everyone together. Um, not, not a lot of it is major things, it's just small things here or there, and I'm trying to keep the bill together as much as I can. Um, once you pull you know, one thing out, it creates issues, and so I'm trying to keep the bill um, together as it is now, at least to get it over to the House and really start that conversation. This is an issue that back in 2011, um, they put out a report of the things that need to be done and the changes that need to be made, and was largely just ignored. And here we are 13 years later, ignoring every suggestion to, to improve the system. So um, I'm optimistic that with time, we can find the right solutions and not have to go to another study that will probably get ignored for another 13 years. And so um, that, that's kind of my mindset on it. Iowa lawmakers are also behind on a key budget deadline. They were supposed to pass a bill increasing money to public schools last month, but House and Senate Republicans have not yet reached an agreement on how much to raise public school funding. They also say their AEA plan and another proposal to raise teacher pay could impact the education budget, so they don't want to raise school funding without first addressing those other bills. But as lawmakers are stuck in those negotiations, schools across the state were required to certify their budgets for next school year by last Friday. And that's even though they don't know how much funding they'll receive ne for next year. Still to come on close up, from cracking down on gun violence to keeping the cost of energy low, KCCI got answers from top White House officials on what the Biden administration says they're doing to help Iowans.
Tonight, we can proudly say the state of our union is strong and getting stronger. It's been more than one week since President Biden gave his State of the Union address and KCCI was there as he touted his top accomplishments and laid out his agenda moving forward. In Washington, D.C., I was able to talk directly to White House leaders to get answers for Iowans. During his State of the Union speech, President Biden vowed to expand abortion access in America. I asked Director of Gender Policy Jennifer Klein about that goal and what the path forward to achieving that would look like with so much gridlock in Congress. When you talk about enshrining Roe into law being Biden's you know, North Star, um, where is he at right now in terms of the negotiations with Congress? Obviously, it's proved very difficult um, right now to unify on, on other things that are even maybe less divisive than abortion. There is a bill that exists on the Hill called the Women's Health Protection Act, and there is discussion about that bill, and that continues. Um, and so we are more than willing to work with anybody on that bill or any other uh, great bill that people can come up with to actually right now uh, make changes. Um, the, the larger and longer point, and I can't talk about elections from here, but I can talk about what we've seen across the country, which is that every single time Americans have had the ch choice, the opportunity rather, to make their voices heard on this issue, whether that is through the six or so ballot initiatives in states like Michigan and Ohio and Kentucky and Kansas and California and Vermont, really across the spectrum of, of states, um, people and women in particular, but people have been really clear um, that they want reproductive freedom and they've literally enshrined it in the Constitution, for example, in, in Michigan or in, in Ohio. And here in Iowa, this comes after several bills about health care died during Second Funnel. That includes one that would have increased penalties for ending a, quote, unborn life. And many said that could have threatened availability of in vitro fertilization treatments in Iowa. Also, during his address, the president took aim at the NRA and demanded strict gun control measures. Gun violence is a topic that has weighed heavily on the hearts of people in central Iowa two months after the school shooting here in Perry. Sixth grader Amir Joliff was killed and Principal Dan Mar Bar Marburger died from his injuries 10 days later. The shooter was identified as 17-year-old Dylan Butler, who died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound on the scene. Deputy Director Greg Jackson with the White House's Office of Gun Violence Prevention says one of the top priorities of the Biden administration is providing resources to youth in crisis and making sure they don't have access to guns. What we're seeing is that they don't have the resources to help them navigate through that moment of crisis before they cause harm. And so this administration and this office is helping to expedite the largest investment in youth mental health in history to ensure that those resources and those helping hands are not just dollars in Washington, but are real individuals in schools and in our communities. In addition to mental health, the Biden administration says these are their four main objectives, enhancing background checks, pushing forward efforts to make sure firearms are stored securely in every home, cracking down on gun trafficking, and preventing firearm theft from homes and cars. Another concern facing Iowans, the high cost for prescription drugs. I asked the Secretary of Health and Human Services about when real people will see the benefits of the Inflation Reduction Act. The president has done a lot on already lowering prescription drug costs and is planning to expand that. But could you just talk to the Iowans and I'm sure Americans across the country as well that love the sound of that, but at the moment on Medicare, there are still you know, many costs that feel very high, and they just want to know, what is the implementation? You know, how long will it take until they can start to feel the relief from those actions? Yeah, and Amanda, I think you're reflecting what most Americans will say. I hear you, I don't feel it. Let's put it to you this way. Uh, if you know someone who has diabetes, they're probably feeling it, because they're the ones that are paying only $35 a month for their insulin coverage, when before they probably were paying $150, $250 a month for their uh, medicine. And the U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services says right now they are in the midst of negotiating the cost of the 10 costliest drugs for Medicare beneficiaries. He says people who use them should see some relief this fall. It will be felt, but they hear it now. They will see it soon. And so, Amanda, I, 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 for those folks, I say, please stay tuned because you've held on this long. You're really going to be happy when you get to save all that money. 
And the Iowa caucuses have come and gone, but promises from Republican presidential candidates campaigning for the White House about lowering energy costs have stuck with many Iowans. I talked with the Deputy Secretary of Treasury. He told me that the Biden administration has its own plan, and Iowa farmers are a key part of it. What is the Biden administration doing um, with energy to keep costs low? What we know is that ultimately being reliant only on oil as the source of our energy is going to make us dependent on a resource where the price is set globally. That's why the president has wanted to make sure that we also have renewable energy that's part of that mix. And Iowan farmers have played a role in helping that with that renewable um, revolution by contributing to things like sustainable aviation fuel. And he also noted that there are tax credits from the Inflation Reduction Act that Iowans can take advantage of that would give them some breaks for replacing windows and doors with ones that are more energy efficient. Next on Close Up, Iowa Republican lawmakers weigh in on what should be done at the southern border and how it compares to Biden's plan. Welcome back to Close Up. The crisis on the U.S. southern border has been top of mind for lawmakers after a bipartisan border bill stalled on Congress last month. The president demanded lawmakers send him a bill, but Republican Senator Joni Ernst says he has the power to make changes without Congress. What we had hoped to do with that border package, which I did think was a good idea, was to raise the, the uh, standard for asylum seekers you must be able to meet a higher threshold before you are admitted into the United States. We could have immediately deported those people coming to our border that didn't meet that standard. There were a lot of really wonderful things in that package, but Joe Biden still can do all the same measures that President Trump had done before. In his speech, Biden said that that bipartisan bill would limit the amount of time that asylum seekers are in the country before receiving an appointment, but asked and called on Congress to pass it. Republican Representative Zach Nunn said he wanted to see more tangible action from Biden in his speech and agreed with Ernst that there are things that the president can do now besides pushing that bill. I was just at the border in Yuma and, you know, a remain in Mexico plan that was there when the president came in, absolutely on the table, working directly with our counterparts to deter this mass influx of not just human suffering, but of, you know, human trafficking and of drug trafficking that's coming in. The White House in recent days has touted the president's steps to mend the broken immigration system, including securing more resources for border security and deploying more agents and officers than previous presidents. This comes as voters across the country list immigration as a top issue this presidential election. 
The administration is also reporting record levels of illicit fentanyl have been seized. Now to a bill that puts the future of TikTok in jeopardy. It would ban the social media app in the United States. The bill is now in the hands of the U.S. Senate after passing through the House. Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley says it's about protecting Americans from Chinese interests, while business owners and influencers who rely on the app's reach say they could lose money if it's banned. If there's information on TikTok that compromises our national security, then I think that's reason to uh, pass this legislation. It became an income source for us at the time, and, uh, and now with real estate, um, it's a huge marketing source. Now the bill passed by the House would give TikTok's parent company ByteDance a choice. They can either sell TikTok within six months or lose access to app stores and web hosting services in the United States. TikTok's CEO is on Capitol Hill to talk to lawmakers. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and I intend to clarify it. You know, there's a lot of noise, but I haven't heard you know, exactly what we've done that's wrong. TikTok says it would deny requests from the Chinese government to protect America's data. It also points to Project Texas, an initiative that TikTok started in 2022 to safeguard American users' data. The bill still faces an uncertain future in the Senate. You can get the latest developments on this bill by downloading our free KCCI's mobile news app. Well, thank you for joining us for KCCI 8 News Close Up. We'll see you back here next Sunday. Have a great day.